Greetings, greetings, and thank you for joining. This is The Authentic Word, and I'm Apostle Dr. Brooke Crawford. God bless you, God bless you for joining the program once again, and you're going to be immensely blessed once again. We are still on the same topic, and grace and peace and abundance be unto you today because the more you fall in love with Jesus and the Father, wow, the more loving and kind and amazing heart you're going to have. <laughs> Hallelujah. And our topic, of course, is where is your heart? What kind of condition is your heart in? And, you know, some people may have a condition of depression, of distress, of sadness, of loneliness. All of that has to do with your heart. And if you get into a relationship with the Savior, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all of that will disappear. Your relationship with the Lord, will he will open you up to receive your new heart. He wants to give every one of his children a brand new heart. You don't have to ever be in that state again. When you get in the word of God, when you learn how to love and treat people, you, your heart will be full of delight. Your heart will be full of joy and peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. So uh, let me just pray for you. And then we, we're going to jump right into the word once again, because God's goodness, it never fails. And his mercy endures forever. And we're going to be back again in the book of Psalms. Psalms is so full of many things about our hearts and how God is ministering into us through our heart. And some things, revelation and wisdom and knowledge can come through your heart as well. Hallelujah. And so he said, I want you to trust in me. And lean not to your own understanding, but lean to me, depend on me, trust in me, and let me fill your heart with all of the joy and the peace that comes with walking with me in an intimate way. God wants you to fellowship with him. God wants you to spend time with him. He, he wants you to, you to get to know his heart and as you get to know his heart, your heart will be changed and become more like his heart too as well. So let me just pray for you and we're going to get started. Amen. Hallelujah. So Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. I just thank you, Lord, for all of those who are watching, all of those who wants to receive more of your word, all of those who are growing <clears throat> and overcoming, <clears throat> excuse me. And the overcoming can, is not even possible without your spirit being in our hearts. The Holy Spirit changes our hearts. The Holy Spirit gives us the brand new hearts. And so I just thank you that you're opening up the, their hearts. Hallelujah. Their minds, their soul, and all of their strength that they're giving and paying attention to you so they can grow thereby so that you'll be delighted and, and they will be delighted in you. You said if they delight themselves in you, you will give them the desires of their heart. And so I know, Lord, there's many out there right now who's listening that wants those desires to be fulfilled. And only you and you alone, Lord, can do them. And so I just thank you now that you've already started that process in them as they receive your message upon today, all you and none of me. And so we give you the praise, the glory, and the thanksgiving for it right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. And God bless you once again. And you know, when I say that, <clears throat> that word to bless means to empower you to prosper. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah empower you to prosper and have good success. And so as you get to draw closer with your heart to the Lord, 
you're going to be empowered to prosper. You're going to have good success. And that everything you put your hands and your heart and your mind to do, it will not fail. It will be a blessing. And you'll be blessed going in and you'll be blessed coming out. And you'll be blessed all around from the north, south, east, and west. And the desires of your heart will be so joyful and fulfilling. And the more you walk with the Lord, the more intimacy you have with him, the closer you draw to him in your heart, the greater your joy shall be, the greater your life will be, the greater fulfillment you'll have in your life. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> Praise God. So now let's go look at this in Psalms 119. Psalms 119 is it's another amazing psalm that uh, David and some of his companions wrote. And this particular one uh, is all David, I do believe, because some of the Psalms are combined with what he has said and what they have said. And so uh, Psalm 119 is wonderful. And we're going to start in verse 1. And in verse 1 it says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way. How do you become undefiled? By repenting by admitting your shortcomings and your faults, by allowing God to change you and give you a new mindset, by allowing yourself to get rid of your stinking thinking, you're changing how you think, you're not thinking the way you used to think, you may have been thinking evil, you may have wanted to do something bad to someone, somebody who hurt you deeply or badly. No. Don't get revenge. Don't get back. Let the Lord do it. He says, the vengeance is mine. I will repay because now you have a new heart. And he is the only one that can bring that justice to you. He can make all of that be a blessing. He said, I'm going to make everything work out for your good and for my glory because you have a new mindset a new heart. Hallelujah. So in Psalms uh, 119 verse 1, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. And how do you do that? By walking in love, by walking in forgiveness, by walking in faith, by walking in righteousness. He, he, all of that is a gift from him. He gives it to you. And so you don't have to worry about how you're going to get it, how you're going to obtain it. you got to work it out for yourself. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not your work that's going to change you. It's his work that's going to change you. It's his love from his heart to you that's going to change you. He, he is his his circumcised heart that he's giving you, brand new one. You don't feel that way toward that person anymore. No more hatred. No, no more lying on them. No more cheating on them. No more anything that's negative. You're not going to do it to them. You're not going to want to do it because you've got a new heart and, and your heart is full of love and joy and peace and goodness. Wow, and faith and self-control and discipline. That's the kind of heart that God says he wants to put in you. He wants you to have. He wants you to come back to him. He wants you to love him like he loves you. And the only way you can grow into that is an intimate relationship with him and in his word. And so let's look at verse 2 of that, 119. He says, blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Wow. The testimonies that Jesus went through for you and I, the price he paid with his entire being, that he came from heaven to come and to save us, to get everything back that was given away by our original parents. Oh, my, 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 my. And so they had a change of heart. That's why they changed their minds and ate off of that tree that God the Father told them not to eat off of. Why? Because they were influenced by an evil spirit, which was the serpent that was in the garden speaking to Eve. 
and she was truly deceived. But Adam was not. Adam knew the consequences of his decision that he made. His heart changed toward God. And when he changed his mind and had a different heart toward God, God told him, this is what's going to happen if you do this, that you will no longer be one with me. You and the woman will no longer be one with me. The three of them were one, just like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is one, just like you and I are one with the Father and the Son, because we have the Holy Spirit, so we're one with them. And as you develop your relationship of oneness with God, that's what the Day of Atonement was all about. Being at one with God, how? By asking him to forgive you. By, and I don't know if Adam and Eve ever asked for that forgiveness or not. Well, let's pray that they did, and maybe we will see them someday, if that is, in fact, what happened. Now, it may not have been, but I'm sure they had some kind of remorse later, but they knew, Adam knew the consequences of agreeing with the woman to eat that fruit. So his heart changed, her heart changed, became a heart of, of uh, pride of life and listening to the serpent saying that he told her that she'd be like God if she ate off that tree. But she wasn't thinking. She was already like God. She already had a heart like God, had a mind like God. She was in the image of God. She was in the likeness of God in every way, both of them. So a change of heart can make a change of everything in your life, every situation, every circumstance. Wow, your attitude and a change of heart toward your children, toward your boss on your job, toward any situation or circumstances that, that's going negative. Think positive and say, no, they're in agreement with, with me and it's going to work out according to the will of God for your life. And you, your heart will be full of the joy of the Lord. And that joy brings peace. And that peace brings strength. And that strength continues to, to grow in you. Because you're strengthened in your growth and your relationship with the Lord. And so he said in verse 2, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. And what else? That seek him with the whole heart. Everything you got. The whole heart. And then we read that in Deuteronomy chapter 8, I think it was, and Deuteronomy chapter 5, where God said, love me with all of your heart. He told the Israelites this. He told Moses to tell them that I, these are my people that I raised up just for me, to love me with all of their heart, all of their mind, all of their soul, and all of their strength. Don't you know that is the Father, that is the Lord Jesus Christ who gives you that so that you're capable, that you will be able to do just that. Oh, wow, you're going to be so blessed. Oh, wow, and you, and you seek him with your whole heart. I can't emphasize that enough because that is really what this is all about. Where is your heart? Is your heart 100% for the Lord God? Is your heart 100% for the Holy Spirit and for Jesus? He said, because there's nothing I will withhold from you. There's nothing that I won't give you that you desire as long as it's good. And you will not seek his will. And you do it with all of your heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So now let's look at another verse. Here in this same chapter, let's look at verse 10. Uh, well, let's start with verse 9. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? How do you do that? Young man, young woman. Anytime the word of God uses the word man, he means mankind. He means male and female. So don't get offended. Don't get upset. Don't think, oh, this is just talking to a man. No, this is talking to 
God's whole humanity. He made them both to do the same thing. And he says, so with cleanses ways, by taking he according to what? God's word. According to your word, Lord. So this, this is another wonderful, amazing, really, really, I think it's the longest chapter in the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. And he says, so with thy whole heart have I sought you. Oh, my. See, that's why God loved King David so much, because he wanted a heart just like God's. He said, I, I have a broken and a contrite heart. And give me a heart just like your heart, Lord. And so he's saying it here again in verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought you. Oh, let me not wander from the commandments. And you, if your heart is truly all his, you're not going to wander away from the commandments of God. And those commandments are basically all about you loving him and all about you loving others. And he said, that's how you know a true disciple of mine. They're going to love all people, all of their brothers and sisters. They're going to love them one and another. Jesus said, that's how you know a true disciple, that they have love in them. And where does that love come from? It comes from out of their heart. It comes from their way of thinking. It comes from the spirit of God, which is in their heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Hallelujah. And so he said, thy word have I hid in my heart. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, he said, I've hid your word in my heart. Yes, if the word of God is really hidden deep down inside of you, oh, wow, you're going to keep his commandments with your whole heart. That I might not sin against you. You're not going to want to sin against God. You're not going to want to do anything that you know he doesn't like, that he's displeased with you doing. And he's pleased with you learning how to be in love with him and in love with others, to love all people of all kind. He said, and thy word I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Wow, blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statues. So God says, David says to, to the Lord, teach me your statues. Teach me your commandments. Show me how to keep them. How do you do it? By walking in love. And you know, that reminds me of a verse here in the book of Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. I think that's the chapter I want. Romans chapter 8. My Bible is truly a worn Bible here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8. And in Romans chapter 8, Apostle Paul is talking about how we have the new spirit of Christ in us. And that new spirit of Christ in us causes us to want to be like Jesus. And so he said he wants us to love him with all of our heart. And let's see now, but that's not the verse I want. Ah, uh, let's see, where is it? We walk in that love, we walk by the Spirit of God, righteousness. And remember I said now how the Spirit of God comes to live 
in your heart. Hallelujah. So you have to be in the spirit in order to really know how to love, how to walk in the spirit. You have to be in the spirit. You have to have the spirit of God in you. Otherwise, it is totally impossible for you to be in love with Jesus and the Father be without the Holy Ghost. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus because of the love of Jesus in you through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he said, and because you are a new creature in Christ, then are they who, but you are not in the flesh, but you're in the spirit. And if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. So the spirit of God have to dwell in you to really learn how to love with all of your heart. To love the Lord with all of that. To love others with all of that. Love your spouse. Love your children. Wow. You truly love one another. You're not going to mistreat them. You're not going to be prejudiced toward them, treat some better than you're going to do others. Now, you may have your, your special ones. You may have your favorites. Everybody has favorites of, of some kind. And so that love is a little bit more special toward that person. But God said that's perfectly all right because you've got plenty of that dwelling on the inside of you. <laughs> you're not going to run short of loving them with all your heart. You're, you're not going to have a lack of, of love. You're, you're not going to lack in love. You're going to be abundant in love. You're going to love them, and they're going to love you. And when people see your genuine love for them, what happens? They're kinder, and you're kinder, and it perpetuates love. Love perpetuates love. And so your love relationship with the Lord, Jesus Christ, your Savior, and your love relationship with the Father, it just will continue to perpetuate and spill over to people of all kinds, people of all nations, people for the whole world. You will not lack in love because your heart is in the right place. Hallelujah. And so, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And if so, be that the spirit of God dwells in you. And if any man have not the spirit of Christ, see, that's the spirit of Christ. The spirit of love. Hallelujah. The spirit of faith. The spirit of, of righteousness. And he said, and, and, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You cannot be a Christian without having the love of Jesus in you. The Holy Spirit gets you started with learning how to love the godly way, the godly love. And it said, and... If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he has raised you up also, and you are quickened in your bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. And verse 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, the spirit of love, Hallelujah, the Spirit of God, led by that Spirit, they are the sons of God. Wow, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Now we're going to go back to, real quickly, we're going to go back to Psalms 119. There's much more there I wanted to show you. Praise the Lord. And that was in verses 33, 34, and 35. And it says here, Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, 
and I shall keep it until the end. You're going to endure it till the end. You're going to have the spirit of perseverance. You're going to have the spirit of tenacity. You're going to have the spirit where you never give up and you never quit. And you're going to just keep growing, growing more and more in love with the Lord and with the Father, and more and more in love with your purpose and with your destiny that they have called you to. And look at verse 34. Give me understanding that I shall keep your law, and you shall observe it with my whole, I shall observe it with my whole heart. I'm telling you, that's the key. The whole heart, your whole spirit, your whole being, with all that you have in you, and make me to go in the path of your commandments, for therein do I delight. You're going to delight in doing what's right. You're going to delight in being in love with Jesus and being in love with the Father. You're going to be delighted to do that and be in that. And he says, what else? And incline my heart unto your testimonies and not to covetousness. Wow. You're not going to covet uh, what somebody else have because you're going to have so much overabundance flowing that you're going to be trying to give yourself away. You're going to be giving away more and more love. You're going to be caring for more and more people. God is going to open new doors for you. You're, you're, you're going to be just the most best boss and best leader. And whatever you do, you're going to do it in love. You're going to do it in joy. You're going to do it in peace. You're going to do it in faith. You're going to do it in confidence. You're going to do it in patience. You're going to do it with discipline. You're not going to be upset. You're not going to want to beat anybody over the head with what you want them to say and do. You will allow them to be free, to make their choice, just as the Lord had allowed you to make yours. So on that note, we're going we're gonna to be back on this again. I'm telling you, this is so good that where is your heart where is the treasure of your heart at? Hallelujah. Look at the condition once again. And so I'll see you next time. And don't forget my book, The Church That Makes the Difference. You are that church that makes the difference. God bless you. And I'm going to say, Shalom, Shalom.